point. The point really is that when the next financial crisis does strike, consumer prices will already be gaining and the Fed will be forced to cut to zero in the midst of those increases in consumer prices, which is probably, in my view, going to bring gold and silver dramatically higher very quickly and possibly cause panic in the dollar itself. What we have is rising consumer prices, an approaching financial crisis, silver approaching an uptrend line that was established in 2020. We could see a smash in silver, but gold, we've seen a lot of spot activity, a lot of warrants changing hands, a lot of bottom picking by rich clients of JP Morgan, we could be getting close to a bottom in gold, just above 2000 And once we have open interest settling down in silver, I believe it will be time to buy for the next round up, which will, of course, go vertical once the Fed is forced to print more money. Welcome to today's show. We begin with alarming news from the U.S. commercial real estate sector, where a staggering $1.5 trillion wall of debt is on the horizon. Analysts warn that this looming debt could exacerbate the risk of defaults. Commercial properties potentially might be plummeting by as much as 40 percent. The continuation in the housing problem as home prices so are to all team highs. Meanwhile, in central banking news, the U.S. Federal Reserve's balance sheet has surged by almost $100 billion this week alone, now totaling a remarkable $400 billion. Uh, this expansion reflects the Fed's ongoing efforts to support cash-strapped banks, particularly following the collapse of Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, and Signature bank. Adding to the strain on the banking sector, projections suggest that U.S. banks could face another $160 billion in losses as the commercial real estate market braces for its most significant crash since 2008. With the sector on shaky ground, the potential impact on banks underscores the challenges ahead for financial stability. Stay tuned for further updates as these developments continue to unfold, shaping the economic landscape in the United States and beyond. Now, in the continuation of the episode, we'll show you more clips of Michael Pento. But first, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications. Let's get into the video. And it all points to one thing. Are we headed to 2008? Another 2008? I think it's, I think it's highly likely. Um, what does the Fed do in response to that? Do they just simply lower interest rates back to zero? Maybe. Do they go back into QE? Maybe. Do they launch another, you know, TARP, TALF, um, helicopter version of helicopter money? Maybe. But here's the big difference. Every other time in history since 1987 that the Fed went down that road, they did it many times. They did it in the, you know, the Thai bot collapse, Russia, Russia collapse, 2000 Nasdaq collapse, 2008, 2019 repo crisis, 2020 COVID. I mean, they've done it over and over again. Every time they've done it, there was a condition of deflation. They were fighting deflation. And when you, the way you, the deflation, by the way, done again, is a healing process. It is. So recessions and deflation are a way to heal the economy from the excesses. You know, it's creative destruction, sort of, in a, in a way, a version of it from Joseph Trumpeter talked about it, uh, famous economist. Um, so the next time the Fed does this, the next time the Fed goes back into QE mode and ZERP and QE and helicopter money, I have a very salient fear and belief that that relief that usually comes from lower interest rates, I mean, the Fed controls the short end of the yield curve. That There's no doubt about that. So they can always take interest rates to zero. T-bills T -bills will go to zero. Fed funds rate will go to zero. But the long end of the bond market, which is concerned about supply and inflation, might not respond favorably. In other words, Prices could go down and yields could go up because you're not fooling anybody anymore. The 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 value of a currency is uh, the faith in a fiat currency 
is what inflation is all about. And people lost their faith in the U.S. dollar's purchasing power, not against the euro, not against the yen or the pound or the yen. They lost faith in purchasing power against, of, against hard assets, against, you know, edifices. So that happens again. The Fed goes down that same path. I think any relief that is normally found from lower interest rates, which is part of the deflation story, which is part of the, you know, debt default and reconciliation story goes away because you could get rising long term bond yields. And so 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 this there's no quick salve if that's the case. So that's my caveat. And I'm watching it carefully. In the continuation of the show, Andy Schechtman highlights how the U.S. Federal Reserve's balance sheet has surged by almost $100 billion this week alone, now totaling a remarkable $400 billion. Will the United States collapse? Hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications bell. Let's get into the video. Last year, we're not in the dollar. That's that's not something we're used to seeing. And so when you talk about settlement in all all throughout, you know, Russia and, and Iran are not taking dollars anymore. United Arab Emirates said they're not going to take dollars anymore. All of these countries are trading with one another, India and Saudi Arabia and Russia and China. They're all in Iran. They're all trading in local currencies. And what the petrodollar is, is not just being valued in dollars that's that's part of it the other part is taking the proceeds the the reserves the excess and investing it in u.s treasuries well the treasury market yeah. that's not what they're doing they're selling treasuries and if you look at what gold has done since 2000 it's appreciated by 7.8 percent per year that's more than the seven percent appreciation per year on the s p and has destroyed the bond market and, and gold as we were saying with your silver has no counterparty risk so these countries who have been accumulating all the gold, the central banks buying more than ever, at the same time, they're shedding treasuries. China's down to like their lowest level in 17, 18 years, as are most of the BRICS countries, as are a lot of the central banks around the world. They're shedding treasuries and buying gold, which has much less risk in terms of you know interest rate risk and inflation risk and default risk. It has no counterparty liability, and it's way outperformed the bond market. So when you talk about all this settlement not being done in dollars and and much less demand for US treasuries at a period of time where we have we have a government addicted to spending where's it all going to come from how about the 8 trillion dollars just in two year treasuries that are rolling over this year that need to be paid for how about the almost 10 trillion in debt we have to issue this year just to pay for what we've already promised on top of the $1.7 trillion deficit, on top of a government says they're going to lower rates. No, 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 no. They're not because who's going to buy those bonds? It makes it that much less attractive. You have to borrow more just to pay for what you already borrowed. It is a very, very, very <laughs> bad situation. So the bond market, which is cratering, you could argue the worst performance in, I don't know, 45 years where the 10-year treasury had greater volatility than the gold market for the first time in 45 years. You have these central banks trading with other currencies, not the dollar, for energy or for whatever it may be, and then taking the reserves that they have and buying gold with it. Just like on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, you can trade with China. If you're Iran, sell your oil to China uh, for the yuan, and which is immediately convertible into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And they are using gold, in my opinion, as their reserve. So all of the yeah. settlement yeah. not done in do dollars chips away at the reserve status of the dollar. And now you see less interest in the U.S. Treasury market, which, you know, Ron, think about it in a historical perspective, a government's debt has a very small footprint in terms of historical significance of being an asset. Well, for a long time now, the last 50 years, the U.S. Treasury has been the most liquid sought after asset. But those things, these things are changing. And now mm -hmm. these governments are, I think, finding the performance and the safety and the lack of counterparty liability more preferential than holding U.S. Treasuries. Next, Rafi Farber explains his insights on how to interpret all this economic situation. And it looks to me like the CPI, the way they measure inflation, has bottomed. All of the sticky parts of the CPI, those products, goods and services that change prices at the least, are on their way up. We're headed into another round of consumer price gains, increases. I wouldn't call that inflation, but that's what they call it. And because we are, it's going to make it very 
difficult for the Fed to cut until, of course, there is the next financial crisis, which is rapidly approaching. We've seen it with New York Community Bank Corp, and I'm going to show you a list of banks that are doing even worse than them, but haven't made the headlines yet, but they will. As we all know, the bank term funding program expires on March 11th, which happens to be when I'm giving a talk in Petar Tikva on money. But that's beside the point. The point really is that when the next financial crisis does strike, consumer prices will already be gaining and the Fed will be forced to cut to zero in the midst of those increases in consumer prices, which is probably, in my view, going to bring gold and silver dramatically higher very quickly and possibly cause panic in the dollar itself. What we have is rising consumer prices an approaching financial crisis, silver approaching an uptrend line that was established in 2020. We could see a smash in silver, but gold, we've seen a lot of spot activity, a lot of warrants changing hands, a lot of bottom picking by rich clients of JP Morgan. We could be getting close to a bottom in gold, just above 2000. And once we have open interest settling down in silver, I believe it will be time to buy for the next round up which will, of course, go vertical once the Fed is forced to print more money for its buddies, who they also want to force to borrow more money from them from the neglected discount window. What do you think of today's episode? Do you agree with Andy Sheckman? Do you feel secure with your savings in dollars? Post in the comment section down below your insights on the video, especially if you'd feel safer having crypto than money in your bank account. Thanks for watching it to the end. Take advantage of the massive sign up bonuses to get crypto. If you have not yet done so, subscribe to the channel and check this upcoming video because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.